Let's take a quick look at the rack system found in the new Steinberg Mix console. If you don't see the racks initially, go to your setup window in the upper left hand corner and make sure that the channel racks are enabled like that. The racks can contain many different elements such as routing, pre-insert, sends, EQs. If you don't want to see the different elements of the rack, they can be filtered by going to the racks toolbar and choosing what you want to see or not see. The racks can be zoomed using standard Cubase shortcut keys for G and H. So if you want to zoom horizontally, or you could also hold shift G or H or use the zoom toolbar here to zoom vertically. Now, as we open up the rack headings and click on that, that would expose the contents between that rack. You may notice that one element is open at a time. That's because of a channel rack setting, which is found just to the right of the rack's toolbar called exclusive. So now if I turn that off, I could click on the pre, as well as inserts, and I could use my mouse wheel to scroll up and down. Looking at my routing, this would show me my available inputs and outputs for each channel of MIDI or audio. If I wanted to use this in conjunction with my quick link, I could activate that by clicking here, or I could temporarily engage that mode by holding shift plus alt or option. I'm going to select all of my drum channels, and I want to route these to my stereo output. So I'll hold down with shift plus alt to option that engages the quick link mode temporarily. And now I could route them to the stereo out, or now if I want to route them back to the drum group, they're all sent to the same destination. If I wanted to ripple input, so this would be input one, two, three, etc., going down the line, for all the selected channels, I could just hold down my shift, select my first input, and then it's automatically rippled for all the selected channels. My pre section would allow me to have a high cut and low cut filter, as well as 48 dB of gain or cut in addition to phase reverse. So if I want to take my bottom snare mic and reverse the phase, I could just do it right from there without the use of a plugin. We'll see our insert slots. Uh, we have eight insert uh, slots. And if you're starting with a project with QBA 7, it'll by default be checked where you don't have a fixed number of insert slots. This project was originally created in QBA 6.5, so we'll see all the empty insert slots. Now inserts can be changed order by just dragging and dropping like that. If you wanted to take an insert effect and copy it to another channel, hold down your alt key and drag like so. One of the problems gets to be when we have so many plugins, actually being able to find the appropriate inserts. So now there's the quick search function. So if I just type in S H A, if I'm looking for my envelope shaper, it'll now filter out everything that doesn't match that text criteria. So I'm going to solo my drum group. And as we listen to this, I'm going to tweak the settings of my plugin here, the envelope shaper. I'll just kind of jump back in the song here. So let's say I like the settings and kind of finding the sweet spot that I want. Let's say I want to go further explore some of the possibilities of the plugin. I could actually choose to copy A to B. That's going to take all these settings and store them. Then if I want to adjust more, I can now jump back and forth and compare the two plugin settings. Plugins will also now have a little drop down menu, which would allow you to do further stuff like opening the remote control editor. So, if you wanted to use standard controllers, including the upcoming Yamaha Nuage controller, that could all be addressed so you can control your plugins intelligently directly from there. Our EQs will fall directly below. And I like to use this in conjunction with our EQ window. So, as we're playing, I could click here and I see sonically what's going on through my spectrum analysis. So if I boost, I could see the original signal plus what signal is going on harmonically from the EQ boost. 
and I could tweak the settings directly here from the settings. So if I want to adjust my frequency, my gain or cut, or the Q, very easy to do that. If you don't see that EQ curve window, again, come over to the setup window and make sure that the equalizer curves are enabled. Perhaps one of the most compelling aspects of the new mix console is the channel strip section. Looking at this, we'll give you six different stages of processing. So we'll have our noise gate. We'll have three different compressors, including a new tube compressor and a new vintage compressor. We have an EQ position. So if I actually wanted the EQ to fall after the gate or compressor, I could click right here and just change the position of the EQ within the signal flow itself. I could also have my envelope shaper as a transient design, tube or tape saturation, as well as three limiters, including the new brick wall limiter. These can be changed the order just like our insert effects by dragging and dropping like that. Now, if I wanted to populate the plugins, I could say, okay, I want my noise gate here and a noise gate on that channel. And let's say a compressor here. Now, if I wanted to see more plugin parameters, these will give you kind of the quick go-to parameters, but often there will be additional plugin parameters that could be viewed by coming right over here to the channel settings and selecting show all channel strip controls or you could also right click and select show all channel strip controls. So now I can come here and see all the different options for my processing. If I wanted to change the order of the plugins within the channel strip, I can now have the compressor come before the noise gate by dragging and dropping. If I wanted to populate this across the entire mix, I could activate my quick link here select my channels from my channel selector. So select the top channel, hold the shift key, select the bottom channel. And now I'm gonna activate the noise gate across all 68 channels. I want to turn on my vintage compressor across all 68 channels. And if you could imagine how many plugins and plug-in interfaces and how many windows you would have to have open in other programs or earlier versions of Cubase to have this level of processing. We'll add our tape saturation now and we'll follow it with a quick brick wall limiter across every channel. Now, of course, you may not want to do this on every single channel, but it'll give you an idea of the processing capabilities that you can have. Now you can scroll up and down, but very easily, but you may want to see more control over your settings. So let's say if I want to take a default snapshot of my mixer view, I'm going to come right over here and then click on slot one and I could save the current configuration. I'm going to go to my racks and I'm going to deselect all except for my channel strip and then we'll open that. And to give it more space, if I don't want to see my channel overview, the meters, or my EQ curve, I'm going to just deactivate those from the view. And I can make the channels a little, uh, in my faders, a little shorter if I wanted to see more. So I can see all of my channel processing there. And now if I wanted to come here, I could save this as a second configuration. And if I wanted to come to my racks again, I could also say in a different configuration, I wanted to see my routing as well as my inserts, my sends and my quick controls. I'll turn off my exclusive. So now I wanna see all of these options in my third configuration save that and now I could just jump back and forth between my preset configurations that easily. One other thing that makes the channel strip incredibly flexible 
is we have multiple side chaining stages. So if I want to take the noise gate, I could have an independent side chaining on this channel for the noise gate, a different side chain for the compressor, and yet a different side chain for the envelope shaper. So incredibly flexible. And again, think of how many plugin interfaces you would need to have open to see this level of control. And again, it's all directly there inside of the Steinberg mix console. Below our channel strips, we're going to have our effect sends. And the effect sends have been updated with a great feature. Uh, I'm going to activate, make sure my quick link is active, select all the channels. And now by right clicking on an empty effect send, I could now add an effects channel track without having to go out to my main project window. So if I wanted a stereo delay, I could turn that on. And now since they're all still quick linked, come right over there, turn it on. I could hold down my control or command key, set kind of an initial value. And now I could link my sends for all of my different channels and tweak them very, very quickly. So a great welcome relief there. Below that, we'll have our quick controls. So quick controls will allow us to set our eight go-to parameters. So if you want to have volume, let's say our linked panner, and plus let's take a look at maybe our effect sends, say level one. So this way we could have eight quick controls that could be set up for, and this works great obviously in conjunction with the Steinberg CMC QC controller or the CC121 kind of eight go-to parameters. Now we also have Q controls uh, and we'll take a look at the Q mix in the, in the next tutorial video. Now the channel strip has also been enhanced. So if I wanted to come over here to the snare, we can now look at it. And one of the things that we see kind of our typical view that we've been accustomed to in Cubase, where we're gonna have our EQ, our effect sends, our channel. We also have our solo. One thing that's very handy, it's a new addition, is the solo defeat. So if I wanted to come right there and hold down my alter option, this way I could have a solo defeat just on my solo right there. As I look at this, I could also see, in addition to our four bands of parametric EQ that we're accustomed to, I'll have our pre-section. So if I want to have my gain, my phase invert directly there, and I'll have my channel EQ, so as I play, I can see my channel. Now, if I wanted to, I could come right over here and go to my channel strip and see all the channel strip information directly there. And if I have my channel strip open here, I could still see my EQ. So this way I could have my EQ, I could adjust it directly here. I could see my channel strip, I could see my EQ with my spectrum analysis, my insert effects, my channel strip plugins, which I can change the order of directly here, as well as my sends, my typical volume, and panning, solo, mute, read, listen bus, all your typical automation parameters there. Now, some additional functionality that's been added is often a drum will go directly to a bus and the bus will go to the stereo output. So sometimes following that signal flow uh, can be problematic. But what's great about this is we can actually click on show the output chain. So now I could see the channel, its volume, the group, in addition to my master fader, and I could adjust all the levels correspondingly. So there's also the search function. So just like our other search functions, if I click here, I could say, okay, I wanna jump to base and then it'll automatically filter out all of my choices directly there. So as you see with the new channel strip controls here and all of the rack system, in addition to the new channel edit system, you have a tremendous amount of flexibility with Cubase 7's mix console. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at the control room.